Well, hello and greetings from Marquette, Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and this is another episode of Flat Earth Can't Science. Cognitive dissonance, as you know, is when your observations don't match your sense of reality, and you can't really get a good handle on why something is happening a certain way. Cognitive dissonance, to me, has the same effect as a laser pointer has on a cat. I just have to investigate it and track it down until I'm satisfied with my answer. That's the situation that we're running into with this video by Flat Earth Addict. Now the original video is linked below, but the purpose of this is not just to show how he went wrong, but why he went wrong, because it's a common problem that we see in the Flat Earth community. Why was this direct flight from Bali to Los Angeles diverted to Anchorage, Alaska, when a woman went into labor and actually had a baby mid-flight? Let's have a look and see what we can figure out. Now, being somebody that's formally trained in navigation, I'm well aware of what a great circle course is, so I thought obviously I had the answer to this. So I pulled it up on my flight software just to see where it would go. Unfortunately, that great circle route came close to Hawaii, not Alaska, so I was perplexed. Well, needless to say, that couldn't be allowed to stand. So when I had some more time the next day, I went ahead and pulled up the video and actually watched it. Well, the first thing that he does is put up this Mercator map of the world. And he talks about the direct line between Bali on the globe Earth and Los Angeles on the globe Earth. Now, of course, you see where the circle is. That's where he's discussing, but Bali is actually off this map. And as you can see, Hawaii would be the logical place to divert a flight if you had an in-flight problem. Yet they went to Alaska thousands of miles out of the way. He then happily pulls up the Gleason's projection map that flat earthers seem to like so much. I added in the line from Bali directly to Los Angeles. And as you can see, not only is the flight mostly over land, diversion to Anchorage, Alaska makes absolute sense on that projection. And from this, he concludes that this is proof positive that the world itself is flat and is well represented by the Gleason map. And very wisely, once he reached that conclusion, he ended the video without going any further into anything else. So now I'll pick it up from there. We do not live in a Mercator map world. We live on a globe. All maps are projections of the globe, which is a three-dimensional object, onto a two-dimensional map. As a result, there are always distortions in any projection of the map, and you choose the projection that you wish to use based on minimizing the distortions for the purpose you want to use it for. Now the Gleason's map is a polar projection map. Basically you center the map on the North Pole, you take the lines of longitude and extend them out like a spider web all the way to the South Pole. Now due to the way that it is projected and constructed, traveling north and south along lines of longitude actually give you pretty decent directions. However, there's a lot of distortion the further you get from the North Pole east to west. Another thing that people in the Flat Earth community seem to be very confused about is that each one of these lines of longitude go from the center of the map at the North Pole to the outer edge. Now the North Pole is 90 degrees north, and if you look carefully at the Gleason's map, you will see that the outer edge is marked 90 degrees south. What that means is that the entire outer edge is 90 degrees south, which is a single point, the South Pole. So people ask where the, the South Pole is on the Gleason map. It is literally the entire outer edge of the map. Now another thing that seems to really confuse people in the Flat Earth community about these, this polar, polar projection map is that you don't necessarily have to center it on the North Pole. As you can see, here is uh, the exact same projection centered on Toronto, Canada and Cindy, Australia. Now one thing that's very common when you're dealing with projection maps, very much like when you're dealing with photographs, is if you want the most detail with the least distortion, you generally need to look at the center of the map. So if we'd like to get a little better look at the navigation problem presented by this Bali to Los Angeles flight, perhaps we should use the Gleason type map centered on Sydney, Australia. 
doing that, we run into the same problem I ran into uh, trying to project a great circle course from Bali to Los Angeles. The obvious place that you would stop mid-ocean would be the Hawaiian Islands, certainly not up in Alaska, which is even off this map. Now just for clarity, let's go ahead and put up the great circle course between Bali and Los Angeles. A great circle course is the shortest distance between two points on the globe. Now you can see here why I had some cognitive dissonance. Obviously, Hawaii is closer to this route than Alaska is. So why would you not stop in Hawaii and instead go to Anchorage, Alaska? Now here is where real science differs from the flat earth movement. Real science loves it when we observe things that we can't explain because it drives us to try and explain them. Other terms that can be used for cognitive dissonance are confusion, as I was confused as to why the plane landed in Alaska rather than Hawaii, and curiosity. I'm curious as to why that would be. So the way you approach this cognitive dissonance is that you ask yourself two questions. Number one, is my world belief incorrect? Now that's rather unlikely and it is a big change. So you also look at a second question and that is, am I missing something? Well, let's see, are we missing something here? Recall that the original question was based on a non-stop flight between Bali and Los Angeles, California. That was the way the problem was presented. However, rather than just take people's words for it, let's go back and actually look at the video itself and see if we can gather any facts that may have been missed. So here's the article from the Daily Mail. Now, as you see from the headline, it's talking about a woman having a premature birth on a flight from Bali to Los Angeles. However, if you look right underneath it, it says specifically that it's a Taiwanese woman. Why would a Taiwanese woman be on a flight from Bali to Los Angeles? That's at least worth investigating. Again, this is the curiosity being piqued. Now, as we read the article some more, we see this section. The flight took off from Taiwan en route to Los Angeles. Now that is highly significant because although the flight may have originated in Bali, the leg of the flight that was being flown originated in Taiwan. So now we go back to our flight software. Instead of going direct from Bali to Los Angeles, we take it from Bali to the airport it departed from in Taiwan and then to Los Angeles making note of the fact that the problem with the premature labor developed about six hours into that flight, we see that the problem originated approximately where that red star would be. So now if we zoom in a little bit, you can see the flight path of the plane on the Great Circle route. Down in the lower left corner, you see the red star where the problem arose, and then you see the direct course to Anchorage, Alaska which is the nearest large city that would have the medical support that this person would need. Given this new information, which was not originally presented in the discussion, it's quite apparent as to why this flight would stop in Anchorage, Alaska. Going back to our Mercator projection, you can see by simply drawing a straight line from Taiwan to Los Angeles, again, the Hawaiian Islands would make most sense. However, we do not fly lines like this on a globe. We fly great circle courses on a globe. The reason that we fly great circle courses on a globe is that a great circle course is the shortest distance from any two points on a globe. And there is only one great circle course between any two points on the earth with the exception of antipodal locations. The North and South Pole, for example, you could have an infinite number of great circle courses. There are many factors that control the routes that airlines fly. While you can look at where repair facilities and fueling facilities are located, where passenger demand is required on various routes, the primary concern is going to be the actual distance flown, because distance is fuel. fuel it eats into your profits. You want to fly the shortest distance between two points that is economically and practically feasible to you. There has been much ado made about the lack of flights in the southern hemisphere. There are a lot of reasons for that. However, they do exist. Here is an example of a flight between Sydney and Santiago, Chile, 
uh, the flight numbers right there. You can go to the Flight Aware tracking software and you can track this aircraft in real time, anytime you wish. Airline routes are determined based on practicability and profitability. And as a result, you may not see many flights down in the southern hemisphere. They certainly do exist, but the northern routes tend to be more profitable and that's where airplanes go then. Sometimes it's just simply more profitable to offer connecting flights through other areas than direct flights. So in closing, let's go ahead and have a look at the two errors that were made here and the traps that this gentleman fell into. The first trap that he fell into was a lack of cognitive dissonance. He saw a strange finding and chose not to investigate it further. Had he investigated it further, he would have clearly seen in that article that there was a stop in Taiwan, which fully explains this based on a globe model and a great circle course. That lack of curiosity was the bad science part of this experiment. Had he asked the right questions, he would have come up with a correct answer. The reason that he did not ask the right questions is something called confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is when you tend to ignore actual evidence, including large quantities of overwhelming evidence that go against your idea or your proposal in favor of picking out the one or two odd red herrings that seem somehow to support your idea. So in this case, he saw a headline that said, woman gives birth on plane from Bali to Los Angeles, diverts to Alaska. He liked that headline because it went along with his preconceived notion that the earth is flat. It confirmed his bias. And therefore, he just ran with it, but neglected to look at the rest of the article. Unfortunately, the devil was in the details. This is such a problem in the flat earth community that it bears restating. Your conclusion is based on your data. Your data is not based on your conclusion. Well, thanks for watching, and remember to like and subscribe. This rabbit hole's too deep for me. Feel my brain getting real sore.